Well, I think it's no secret, it's winter. It's gone really cold. And we find ourselves today up on top of the Pennines, which is even colder, but we are lucky. We've got the sunshine come out. We're here to talk about cold weather performance of electric vehicles, because this is a common talking point and people would like to know uh, what is going on. But also I discovered something on my car last night, which I saw for the first time. And it's very unusual. So just going back, batteries tend to be a bit sluggish in the winter. Uh, it happens for everything. If you want to try this, put your Apple iPhone in the fridge and at the end of it, try and use it. They are so slow, it's unbelievable. Batteries slow down. So in the winter, we need to do things to try and keep it warm. Now, one of the things that's automatic, particularly with a Tesla and with a lot of other cars nowadays, is something called battery preconditioning. There is a misconception that if you drive down the motorway, your battery heats up. And it doesn't, it doesn't, because it will heat up because when it's turning that electricity into movement, the chemical reaction going on, there is heat generated. But don't forget, if we're traveling across the M62, temperature is down about zero at the moment. You've got a wicked cold wind, ice cold wind, blowing underneath your car. And that is sucking out all of the heat that your battery is generating. So unlike what most people think, if you've done a three hour drive and the temperature outside is zero, when you arrive at a supercharger or any charger, your battery's gonna be pretty cold. It won't be preheated. And that's why with Teslas, if you set the location where you're going to be charging or your final destination and it tells you where you might want to charge, uh, it will always precondition the battery for you. So first lesson is if your car does automatic uh, preconditioning the battery, always tell it you're going to a charging station or a supercharger so it knows to switch on that preheating function. If your car won't do automatic preheating, switch it on manually. And quick tip here, give it a good bit of time. I would suggest half an hour uh, is a good bit of time because that's a brick of a battery underneath. It's huge. So we need to give it some time to warm up. So what that does, when you arrive here, your battery will be nice and warm. And when it's nice and warm, the chemical reaction where we turn chemicals into electricity happens very much faster and very much more efficiently. So even though the temperature here is down at freezing, the battery, when we arrive with preconditioning, could be really nice and toasty. So the charging, when we plug into one of these superchargers, will go ahead as fast as the car and the charger deemed safe, governed by the battery management system. Now these are 250 kilowatt chargers, these are V3s. My car is an older Model S, it's eight years old now, and I'm tapped out at about 150 kilowatts. So whatever I plug into, I'll never get more than 150. And the best I've ever seen, got up to 144 once, uh, it's rare though. So that's preconditioning. But last night, something unusual happened and I haven't seen this before. I've had the car nearly five years. You learn something every day. It was really cold last night, it was about minus two. I got back home and there was, I think about 60 or 70 miles left uh, on, the, uh, on the range, on the state of charge. Uh, by the way, I always set mine to miles. You can set percentage. I prefer miles when I'm driving, percentage when I'm doing videos, strange. Um, so last night it was really, really cold and I decided to charge the car up because we're out on a filming trip today. And when I plugged it in last night to my home charger, this is seven kilowatts, it's a Tesla home charger. I looked on the app just to make sure everything's all right, as I always do. Um, and I saw that for some reason, this time, the car had turned on the battery preheater. So what the car decided was the battery was too cold even with a home charger, seven kilowatts, to put a decent amount of electricity in. So it decided what it was going to do was to preheat the battery while allowing through a low trickle charge until the battery came up to temperature. And as the battery came up to temperature, the charging speed increased and it become, became a lot more efficient. And this really shows that to me, it's logical. Whenever I go to a supercharger out on the road, I'll always use preconditioning. But when I plug in at home, I never think about using preconditioning. Why would you? 
I come in, plug in, go to bed. The car will look after itself. And in this particular instance, the car is doing a better job than me trying to predict what it should be doing. Now, there's a lot of people say, what a waste of energy preconditioning. I have to disagree with you. It's not me saying this, it's Tesla. Tesla has decided in this instant, Tesla who make EVs and make their own batteries, that last night my battery should have been preheated and it turned on the battery preheaters and it charged and preheated simultaneously. Now it knows when I'm at home, I'm not at a supercharger. It knows this. And so it's not doing it for speed reasons. It's not like if I arrive here with a stone cold battery and plug in, this takes us back to the Chicago freeze thing uh, last year in America. Uh, if you arrive at a place too cold, the charger just can't put any power in. But at home, it's, it's effectively a trickle charge. And yet my car decided that it should be preheated. It's very interesting. I know there's a lot of people gonna have comments on it. Oh, you're paying for preheating, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think I will let the car look after itself. If it decided that it should preheat, I'm not gonna countermand it. I'm not gonna stop it because one of my viewers tells me that he thinks I'm wasting energy. I let the car do its thing. Likewise, when you're arriving at a charger, I will let the car decide when to start the preheat. It knows how far it is. It knows the temperature of the battery. It knows how long it's gonna take in the ambient temperature. It's all on the dashboard uh, to get the battery up to temperature. So just leave the car to it, trust the car. Tesla have a built-in interest to make this car last as long as possible and be as an enjoyable an experience in driving as it possibly can. And so if it wants to do things, I don't even question it. So a lot of the cars here, uh, you'll find, we talk to some of the drivers and we find that if you are fairly local or you use this on a regular basis, an awful lot of people don't program the location in to their sat nav. And that means you're driving and the car doesn't know you're gonna stop here and charge. So some of these will arrive with a very, very cold battery. Now, you can contrast this with me last night. Last night, it's a trickle charge, it's seven kilowatts. These are 250 kilowatts. If last night, my car decided the battery needed preheating before it could accept seven kilowatts, can you have a guess if these cars have been kept outside all night long, got really cold, they've driven here, maybe some of them, if they can't charge at home, have only driven a few miles, they will be arriving here really, really cold. And that means that you will have some sort of preheating going on before they actually start charging. Anything that needs preheating is going to extend the time the car is plugged in. If you arrive with a nice warm toasty battery, plug it in, you'll get the maximum charge your car can accept compared to what the uh, charge can actually output. If you arrive with a stone cold battery, it might spend five or 10 minutes preheating the battery before it allows through a decent charge. And guess what? You're paying for it. It's, it's not free you'll be drawing energy off the charger. You'll be paying for it to preheat your battery. So if you are charging at home, for example, and you can charge up at 7p a kilowatt hour and you're on a long journey and you use your preheat, you're preheating your battery at 7p. And then you come here, you'll have a faster charge at the 30, 40, 50p, whatever it is they charge on these particular chargers. If it's really, really cold, like I found last night, those will turn on your battery preheater. You don't have any choice in that. So one way or another, if your battery needs preheating, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, you can't stop it. You plug into one of them, your battery's too cold, it will decide to preheat your battery. So I would rather preheat on the road where I've paid 7p a kilowatt hour at home and I lose 10, 15 miles of range in doing that preheating, whatever the figure is, rather than paying here 30, 40, 50p a kilowatt hour to preheat my battery here and take a lot longer for it. So anyhow, that's just a quick lesson. Uh, it shows a number of things. First of all, the channel's called Dave Takes It On. We take on these things and we also film them and photograph them. And that was the first time I've seen this car do this. 
race. I've had the car almost five years. I've driven quite a lot of miles. I've charged pretty much everywhere in the country and I'm still learning. So anyone out there who thinks, oh, that's it, I've got this cracked, not quite. So thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, please click the like button. Everyone does help us. Also, please, please, please subscribe. It makes such a difference to a young channel like ours. Uh, YouTube treats us very differently if people subscribe. So costs you nothing, it takes about two seconds. Just click the subscribe button. That's all we ask. And if you've done that already, thank you. If you're doing it right now, thank you very much. So I'm Dave.